Well, hey everybody, welcome to Youth Group Online. My name is Carter, and I'm standing here in the church courtyard where in just a couple weeks, we are going to be having youth group in this space. That's right, youth group is happening in person again, and I'm so excited. I mean, imagine this courtyard teeming with people, masks, socially distant as possible, but just having fun together, playing games, singing songs, and just being together again. I'm so excited about it. It's been a long year since we've actually all been together and it's gonna be happening. So again, we're coming back in person starting on Sundays. We're moving to Sundays at 1 p.m. The fun all starts on June 6th right here and I wanna see you there. Hey, another thing I wanna tell you about is that on Sunday, June 13th, we are having Youth Sunday. It's a day where we can share with the church everything that the youth ministry is doing. Plus, we're gonna honor our graduates. That's right, our high school graduates, plus any other graduates. So I'll be in touch with all the graduates soon with more information and more information for you guys about what that day is gonna look like. But go ahead and save the date. Finally, next week, May 23rd, there's actually not gonna be any Bible study because it is our all church Pentecost picnic. As you can see, I'm standing right outside the back of the church. This is Giddings Park. And this coming Sunday, we're gonna have a picnic with the whole church right here. We're really excited about it. It starts at 11.30 after online worship and it goes to about 1.30. So make sure that you and your family come check that whole thing out. It's gonna be good. When's the last time that you were sad? Like really sad? Maybe it was today or a while ago, or maybe you're feeling sad right now. No matter what, it's okay. However you're feeling is totally fine. And sometimes we make the mistake of believing that we shouldn't feel certain emotions if we're following Jesus. We think that feeling sadness or grief or frustration or anger means that we don't have enough trust in God or like we don't have enough faith. We think following Jesus means we should always be in a place of joy and a place of hope and a place of peace. But the truth is the Bible tells us a different story. For the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about music and worship and how the book of Psalms can help us connect with who God is and discover how to connect with him more. You might think that worship songs to God are always filled with joy or praise and songs of victory. The book of Psalms contains worship songs that are actually filled with pain, grief, and even anger. Psalm 55 is a great example of this. It's a song in scripture that expresses pain over being betrayed by a trusted friend. Check it out. Verse four starts with, my heart is in anguish with me. The terrors of death have fallen on me. Fear and trembling have beset me. Horror has overwhelmed me. I said, oh, that I had a, the wings of a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. I would flee far away and stay in the desert. I would hurry to my place of shelter far from the tempest and storm. I don't know about you, but I can feel the anguish and the distress in those sentences, these battle cries to God against the author's enemies. And the author doesn't see a happy ending in sight here. They're in deep distress. The psalmist is shouting to God, I'm not okay with injustice. I'm not okay with this grief. I'm not okay with what's happened, God. This psalm is a lament of injustice. It's a faithful protest to God over the hard things we face in this world, giving words to the psalmist's protests as well as ours. It expresses honest, though uncomfortable feelings. This psalm teaches us that lament makes our worship honest. It makes our worship deeper, and it makes us look for a hope that we can't always see. Now, lament is not something we typically associate with worship or church or following Jesus. Because like I said, there's an idea that you have to be joyful while following God. And if you're not doing that, you're not doing Christianity right, which is like bogus. To quote our current president, Give me a break. That's a bunch of malarkey. Scripture is filled with the stories of people whose lives were really difficult. And so they responded with a full range of emotions like sadness, grief, anger, and frustration. From King David to Jesus and so many more, we see so many examples in scripture of people who did not shy away from pain, but worshiped God in the midst of it. And that's the point. Sometimes life is painful, but when it is, we know that we can worship despite the difficulties. We can worship even when it's difficult. Crashing down, I lift my praises high. Till the darkness turns to dawn, I lift my praises. I choose to worship, I choose you now. Yeah, when the enemy says I'm done, I 
church. I choose to worship. I choose to bow. Though there's pain in the offering, I lay it down. Here in the conflict, when doubt surrounds, though my soul is unraveling, I choose you now. I will praise you through the fire, through the storm, and through the flood. There is nothing that could ever steal my soul. In the valley, you are worthy, you are good when life is not. You will always and forever be my soul. I build my own right here and now. And in the midst of the darkest night, it won't burn. For you are perfect, no matter what. In the joy of the suffering, I sing it loud. I will praise you through the fire. It right here and right now when the enemy says we're done when our world comes crashing down we've still got a song to sing in every season and circumstance we have a song to sing we won't let the enemy steal it we won't let our circumstances steal it he is still good when life is not that's our proclamation that's our declaration wherever we are let's declare it together that we choose to worship right here and right now when the end 